It's just a few minutes until noon, and the tension mounts for these potential students. The next three hours could very well determine the direction of the next four years of their lives. We have a total of 27 students this year, uh, 17 in culinary arts, uh, 10 in baking. And we have uh, first prize is $7,000 scholarship money. Uh, that's annual scholarship, so that's a total of $28,000 if they're here for a four-year program. This written exam and essay is the precursor to and potential tiebreaker for a three-hour trial by burner in which they will have to demonstrate their knowledge of baking or culinary arts. And if they're in baking and pastry, what they have to do is decorate a nine-inch dessert cake. Uh, they have to bake cookies. They have to poach a pear and also caramelize apples. Before the competitions, students receive a basic list of required tasks and the ingredients that will be available to them. Baking students are also allowed to bring a few basic items of their own. I brought a vanilla bean because I love vanilla. It's fun to use. <laughs> Most students arrive at the competition with a plan of what they might do with the broccoli, squash, and other ingredients provided by Paul Smith's. But they have to be flexible because they don't know what the centerpiece of the dish will be until after they enter the fray. Well, see, it was hard to plan specifically for one dish because they didn't give you your protein. Basically, they have to demonstrate proper cooking techniques. Um, and so they were given either a chicken breast or a chicken leg and thigh, both of which would take um, different cooking applications. So that's the entree portion. They were also asked to make um, a sauce. They could choose either a bechamel, a velouté, or a tomato sauce, which are the mother sauces. All of the students come to the competition with previous training. But the pressure of this environment challenges even the most skilled individuals. Each of them must find a way to deal with his or her jitters. The person I got next to, thankfully, was willing to talk as much as I was. So really, you could work off the stress just by talking to him. We watched each other. I think I grabbed his pan a couple times, and I thought I was going to burn. He grabbed mine. I had originally thought that we were supposed to present all our things at the end of the competition. So I had everything worked out so that my pears would be hot, my apples would be hot at the end of the competition. And then she said just any time you were done with it, we were allowed to present it. So I kind of mellowed out a little bit, and I got to do everything just as it went. I think probably one of the hardest things to show is knife cuts because there's a lot of precision involved in that and so if you're in the slightest bit nervous that's really going to show in your knife cuts. Unlike a commercial kitchen, the culinary labs are relatively quiet during the competition. Each student is focused intently on the specific dish he or she is creating. Under the strain of meeting the three hour deadline, it would be easy to commit the one error that might eliminate them from consideration for the awards ceremony. Poor sanitation is a gross faux pas, so of course they were using chicken. Um, if they had chicken on their board and they didn't clean their board properly and their equipment properly and then they were to go and put something like um, a vegetable on their board to cut it, that's a massive flaw and that's simply not acceptable. Though some come uncomfortably close to the time limit, the students are successful in completing their mise en place and product presentation. They kept their faces very straight so you know that to you it might have tasted good, to your friend it might have tasted good. But to them, they could have been thinking it could use this, this, and this, and they, I don't know, they've received so much training, they could probably make a list a mile long of what I could have done. Generally speaking, um, after you've watched them for a couple of hours in work, you can usually see the skill that is or isn't there, and it's trying to assess that behind the actual plate of food, because sometimes things happen. Sometimes the garlic gets burned, and that's going to throw the whole flavor of the dish off. And so it's kind of recognizing what abilities really are there, um, and not necessarily just in the plate of food. Though many of these aspiring professionals must inevitably meet with disappointment, there is a pleasant surprise for all in attendance. And we were so impressed that we decided that everybody today will leave with some scholarship amount. Um. And for a lucky few, a Paul Smith's education becomes a tangible reality. I mean, it means that I'm definitely coming here in the fall, and I'm really thankful that I have this money now. I don't have to pay for college, which was, you know, it was a struggle with my family. But now, I mean, it's good. It's better.